Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Some Friday night, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, the singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. We need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Self-respect, but you should care. Ah! What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, well to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Mike. Mike? Mr. Corleone, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment! You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge! I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance, I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Ainie and I have been up to! Famous last words. Alright, now where's that speakeasy? Mike, you're just in time. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Oh, 
go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a Depression-era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Heine's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Hey, Edna. Oh, Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public you safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars, of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. <gasps> Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down?
who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Ew. 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 Who died and made you boss? Episcopo? Take a hike, squirt. Who told you about this place? Place to call to my travel agent. What's the big idea? Uh, stitch in time saves nine. <sighs> Settle down, mister. Why don't you wait outside and take a nap? Napkin, please. I've made a mess. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Who is the King of Siam? Joe Piscopo? Who told you to come here? Bruce Springsteen? Who said you were worthy? The old gray mare? What will you do if I break your leg? Radio for help? Who told you to come here? Joe Piscopo? Who is the King of Siam? Bruce Springsteen? Who is the King of Siam? Hieronymus Bosch? Who told you to come here? Hieronymus Bosch? What will you do if I break your leg? Row my boat? Who died and made you boss? Joe Piscopo? Who said you were worthy? 
The old gray mare? What will you do if there's a raid? Radio for help? Where do you live? Live for more. Welcome to L Kid, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L-Kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. What people think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am plucky. So jolly and carefree. I don't care. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? The name's, uh, Michael Corleone. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on, what's the dough? Spill it or I'll... Go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some bona fides. Hey, bartender. What'll it be? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having tipped off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like, and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Should I come back for it? Suit yourself. Hey, I know you. You're... Parker. Ask for Danny, Danny Parker, Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? Y you look familiar. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every Yeah, now about those troubles. Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. 
Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't we See you later, fall? Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get Can't this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? There's nothing sure. The rich get rich and the poor get children. In the meantime, in between time, ain't we got fun? Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. All your fears are foolish fancy, maybe. You know, dear, that I'm in love with you. Every cloud Danny. must you. have a so about those troubles. It all started on uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this uh, this car straight out of Buck Rogers popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist when not one but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me. <laughs> Because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty, as in Jennifer's grandma, Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. You've got a secret? What is it? I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen. Yes? I like you. You're my new best friend. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Danny, you! So about that secret. Oh yeah, my secret. Well, you're my pal, so I can tell you, but don't let it get out. I've been working for Tannen for over a month now. What? It's true. All I gotta do is look the other way while evidence is getting destroyed or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line and Tannen make sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope great deal huh no not a great deal what's the problem people need to drink right as long as no one's getting hurt why shouldn't daniel j parker make a few bucks on the action but people are getting hurt kids a killer ah that's just rumors and circumnavigational evidence Although, game is pretty spooky. Oh, God. 
I've made a horrible mistake. I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back. But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> Come on, Danny, pull yourself together. It's not so bad. Not so bad? I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> Hang in there, Danny. Oh, God. Excuse me. Are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey Toots, any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? You were telling me what a great guy kid is. <sighs> yeah. I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend, but until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know, you don't break up with a creep-like kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets. But I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now. But Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. You ain't leaving till I get the dope on you. You really with the Valenti gang? Wait, you ain't leaving till I get the dope on you. You really with the Valenti gang? Wait, you ain't leaving till I get the dope on you. You really with the Valenti gang? Wait, you ain't leaving till I get the dope on you. You really with the Valenti gang? Hey! Take a hike, squirt. Wait, you ain't leaving till I get the dope on you. You really with the Valenti gang? something here that might convince you don't even blink 
It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Mikey Corleone here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> He's back. Hey boy, take away for this. <laughs> Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good. Edna! What? What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, maybe later. I'll be here all night. I think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics. I've, uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure! Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Hey, thanks. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she... Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talk me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. 
We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to- Come up for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Had a girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my unit. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you? I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella. I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What happened in the alley with Arthur? I don't want to talk about it. What about your insurance policy? There ain't no insurance policy. After tonight, I'm tossing it in the furnace and burning it up! Come on, Trixie, can't you tell me what happened out there? No! Then at least give me the evidence you got on Kid. No, I made a deal with myself. As soon as tonight's set is over, the evidence goes up in smoke. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey, Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial-like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Oh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always.
Welcome back, sir. Voila! Nice job. Now, go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. Sorry about this, Dad. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Artie! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Artie was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died... Artie was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history, accounting. And I made a big discovery while I was copying all of kids' books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Hid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book? Hey, copper! He's not interested. Figures. Half the police force is in Tannen's pocket. Give me a few minutes to work on him. I've got a hunch he'll come around. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again. You should care, you should care, what people think of you. She's right. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. Hey, Miss Trotter, uh, you wanted to speak with me? What happened to my louse of an ex-boyfriend? I don't know. Rats. I told the chief we need a team of bloodhounds like they got over in Placerville. Yeah, but in the meantime... All right, everyone. Party's over. Everyone out of the speakeasy. Speakeasy? You're mistaken, officer. This is an ice cream parlor. <laughs> nice try, you. Out!
Corleone. Would the Valenti mob be willing to help uh, defuse this little situation? Sure, no problem. I'll bring it up in the next uh, company meeting. Hey, we ain't begging here. Kid just thought JJ might like a piece of the action. Especially now that he's just caught the speakeasy arsonist. Wait, you mean... Doc? Doc? You ain't with the Valenti gang at all, are you? What do you know about the arsonist? Come on, you. Off to the station house. Kid's gonna get you, rat. He's gonna get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks to Miss Trotter's evidence, the entire Hill Valley police force is out looking for Kid and his goons. You don't understand. We've got to find him now. He's captured a friend of mine. Who? Uh, never mind. Don't worry. We've got the entire town square sealed off. If Tannen's within a mile of here, we'll find him eventually. Uh, I don't think we have time for eventually. 